today on Beyond Six Seconds. The name of the game in most online businesses, especially in apparel businesses, is customer service. And I really want to provide the right service to everybody and make sure that all the girls that shop with me are very happy. Welcome to Beyond Six Seconds, the podcast that goes beyond the six second first impression to share the extraordinary stories and achievements of everyday people. I'm your host, Carolyn Keel. On today's episode, I'm speaking with Amanda Watson. Amanda has 20 years of experience in apparel buying, merchandising, and wholesale in San Francisco. And she's worked for Macy's West, Donna Karen, Ralph Lauren, and the major lines throughout her career. She was working at Ijiji Dresses when she came up with the idea for Style For It to provide a resale space for the expanding category of plus fashion. Amanda, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, I'm so thrilled to have you on today. So tell me a little bit about Style For It and how did you get the inspiration to start that business? Well, the, it's, it's sort of twofold. One was professional and one was personal. And being a plus size girl myself most of my life. I never was able to actually sell clothes over a certain size. So I ended up giving them away or to other girlfriends, or which was fine. But sometimes I, it was like, why can I sell things? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Money would be great because I like to buy more. Mm-hmm. It was always in the back of my head. Like you could sell on eBay, but I never really seemed to have the time to you know, focus on that. And then when I was working with the Gigi, the company, they had a lot of leftovers. And I was watching the leftovers just you know, not necessarily be jobbed out or be given away. I'm like, there really is a specifically curated space for over a size 12. We've got the thread ups of the world and the, again, eBay and all of those places. Like there should be a curated space where women of a, over a certain size should be able to sell their clothes. So I came up with the idea about three years ago, started building it out, took a couple of years while I still worked. And now for the past year, I've been focused. Very cool. So what kind of items do you accept or sell or resell through a style for it? We like things that are very current um, within the past year, unless it's something like a really classic dress, like a Gigi is still a brand that's a very classic brand that you, you know, have a dress from 10 years ago, but it's in great condition to still sell because they're, they've got lovely silhouettes and fabrics. And nothing less than a Lane Bryant price point slash forehead price point, just because of the resale values um, not quite being there. But on the website, we have a list of accepted designers. So is it all like apparel or do you sell accessories as well or mainly shoes on there and handbags? I've really branched out into further accessories. There's a couple of cover-ups for swim. Yeah. So accessories is something we'd like to branch out into further, but I'd like to really focus on sizes 12 and up right now so I can start building the business and other girls can start buying and selling. Right. So how long have you been running style for it? I would say since inception about three years. Okay. And who are your main customers? Do they come from a particular demographic or geographic area? What does that look like? It seems to be all over the map, actually, when I ship out. So I'm able to ship to Canada and Northern Europe, but I am not able to do other uh, countries right now. But that's sort of a goal because with my background in wholesale, in the plus size category, I did find there was a lot of different countries that were sort of, for lack of a better term, thirsty for some more sizing. So that's something we'll, we'll expand on later on. But Right now, it's all across the country. You know, as we talked about in your introduction, you have quite a lot of experience in your career in the fashion industry, having worked for some really major fashion lines and brands. How did that experience help you create your own fashion resale business? Well, actually, it's sort of a hindrance, actually, for resale because my mind thinks in different ways because you're trained to project out. However, what it does is, is it teaches you what to accept and to look at forecasting and review forecasting and say to yourself, you know, if I accept this, it's probably not going to be around for much longer. Again, like I talked about, there are certain brands and certain items that you can say, this will last for five to six years. So because there are certain pieces that you can purchase that, you know, it's going to last for a long time. You know, you just sort of just get an eye for what's going to be great for the future, because if you're going to hold stock, it's going to actually sell in the next three or four months. I see. So you really need to have a different mindset where you're looking for things that will last and have more of a timeless value over several years versus just sort of right. things or, that are... Or you know you can price it at a price point that you can flip it really quickly. So. I see. <laughs> oh, very interesting. So what would you say are your most important skills that you use now to run and grow your own business that you've learned throughout your career? I would say number one, forecasting and financial planning. The unglamorous side of the business is the financial portion of it, but it's also the the most important, obviously, for everybody to make money and get paid and all of those fun things. Mm -hmm. But financial planning is very important. I still do a six-month plan just for projections. 
And that's part of actually what I'm working on for funding. If that's something that um, I'm going to go forward with in the spring, if I'm looking for a venture capitalist or an angel investor, I need to give them proper forecasting for the next one to two years. So as part of my past experience, I'm able to take that into this and look at the forecast and look, look at how much stock I'm going to need in order to make the right amount of money to return the investment. I see. Yeah. I mean, that's a big piece in, uh, in business when you're on your own, you're really responsible for getting the funding in so that you can continue to grow and scale at the right, right. rate. So Back up your savings account. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You don't want to be pulling off and, you know, taking out loans for like the entirety of your business, of course. So that yeah. is, yeah, that's all. <laughs> well, that's exciting that you're going to be going for funding in the spring. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> very cool. So what kind of feedback have you gotten from your buyers and sellers so far through Style For It? So far, some of the ladies have been really happy with their purchases. One gal, which was kind of a fun story, I had a really beautiful dress. It was a brand new dress. Mm-hmm. And she actually, in the interim of three months of having the dress, hadn't worn it and lost about 40 pounds, which is good for her, mm-hmm. and asked if she could exchange it for something else because it no longer fit. Well, I was able to do that for her. And that's something I'm happy to you know, support people on, especially if they've never worn it. The name of the game in most online businesses, especially in the apparel business, is customer service. And I really want to provide the right service for everybody and make sure that all the girls that shop with me are very happy. Right. That's great. Yeah, that's wonderful that you have that personalized customer service and that you can help people as their fashion needs change. That's cool. Yes. And you have a lot of people selling clothes on your site as well, right? I'm trying to really promote people to sell because we do have two ways of selling. You don't necessarily have to mail it in. You don't have to you can save that portion of it and make a little bit of extra commission if you post it on your own. So to be able to a program where you can go online, create a profile, post a picture, put the price you paid for it, and then we will price it for you and we'll load it up to the site. And then once it sells, we'll provide a mailing label for the seller to send to the buyer and then give them the commission. That's great. So how do people who want to buy the clothing from Style For It, how do they search the different fashions? Right now, it's, it's mostly just by size. You know, that's why it narrows it down. Once we really get large, and that's the goal, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, we'll probably do it by brand. I have a couple of brands that you can search by because there's a lot of Lane Bryant and Gigi and Forehead on there. But for the most part, it's just sizing. Ah, I see. So you've been running the business for, you said, about three years. How would you say that it's changed the most from when you first started out or maybe even if you just first had the idea in your head versus how it's evolved to where it is now? Well, I think that we might um, make a big change again for the spring. I'm in looking at the forecasting. I'm considering to start buying new products from lines and also have a separate area where you can shop new products as well. So it's just thought um, because in the past three years, the category, you know, size 12 and up has really expanded in brands and offerings. So I'm looking at opportunities to see if I can do a buy-in or if I can represent the line. So it's called a drop ship program. It's a big deal with Amazon actually and some other, even Nordstrom does it, where you work with a vendor and they have X, Y, and Z products and you put the product on your site and then I would get a commission from the site if they bought it from, I don't know, say Levi Jeans, for example, um, as, as a brand. You know, they would buy, you buy the jeans from the website, but Levi will actually ship it to the customer and then give our website the commission on that sale. So it's something that I'm considering because the wholesale business has changed so dramatically. Yeah, I could see that that would be a nice supplement to help evolve the business and just offer different choices to pick from. And it might be a nice platform for new brands. I know there's a lot of girls out there creating their own lines and I really like to support that. Wonderful. Yeah. Can you tell me about maybe the biggest challenge you faced in either launching or running the business and how did you address or overcome that challenge? Well, the first two years of it, I still worked and that was, that was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't take the time to focus on it. I thought, well, oh, this is the side. There really isn't such a thing as doing these things on the side. It just doesn't work. <laughs> mm-hmm. You really have to give it your all because you're never focused in the way that you can be focused, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Where you have to look for new ideas, new opportunities, new ways to promote, new ways to reach people. And so in the past year, you know, I think I want to say there was 15,000 hits in 2017. In 2018, I went full time. I had 90,000 unique visitors. Wow. So it does make a difference when you really focus on, on your promotions and getting, you know, the word out to people and really, you know, putting your all into it. It, it, It's hard to explain, but it's like anything else. The more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. 
Um, yeah, it's true. And it allows you to focus on the one thing you, as you said, you're going all into it. And yeah, that's amazing that you were able to have such expansive growth in that one year when you were um, truly dedicated. Yes. And, you know, and it, it makes you hungrier because you're not getting a paycheck anymore. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You kind of limit your options for, um, for income. So it's like, this has yeah. to work. So I'm going to focus on it. Wow. So, you know, you talked earlier about planning to go for funding in the spring. Other than that, what other goals do you have for Style For It in the near future? Well, we really like to extend our user base of selling. We really want to create shops for people. Uh, we have a capability with the way that I had this site custom built just for this particular way of selling. And we really have the capability of creating shops, like a Poshmark sort of situation, for lack of a better reference. You know, if you could, if you have your own shop with that person's shop, if someone's your size, you're like, oh, I like Candy's things from Chicago. She always has the cutest stuff and we're the same size. Mm. So you can always go to her closet and she'll post things as she wants to move them along. And you can shop straight directly from her closet. So that's the next step into layering in. We don't quite have as many in the base as we'd like to actually justify that. So that's the next portion. In addition, that we're right now we're developing an app. Yeah, oh, wonderful. I think that'll really expand our, our client base. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, a lot of shopping, you know, is now moving towards mobile. So um, I think yeah. an app is a really cool idea. How can people get in touch with you if they want to learn more about Style For It and check out the website? Well, you can check out the website. It's styleforit.com or you can email us at hello at styleforit.com. Fantastic. And I'll put that information in the show notes of the podcast so that people can thank find you. it there. Sure. So yeah, Amanda, thank you so much for uh, giving us some more insight into Style For It and all the exciting growth that you're planning in the near future. As we close out the podcast, is there anything else that you'd like our listeners to know or anything else that they can help or support you with? Go through your closet if you're ever a size 12 and sell on Style For It. <laughs> right. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Amanda, for being on my podcast. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Beyond Six Seconds. Please help us spread the word about this podcast. Share it with a friend, give us a shout out on your social media, or write a review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast player. You can find all of our episodes on our website, www.beyond6seconds.com. Until next time.